If you haven't watched any of my previous videos, then you probably don't know I'm a big fan of this company called Convex. If you have watched some of my previous videos, then you probably already know that I'm a little bit of a sh shill uh, for this company. Um, I just think their technology is so cool. It makes building applications seem so much less complex and daunting because a lot of the problems that you want or that you are going to need to solve to implement the features you want to implement are already solved for you. And they actually just had a big announcement this past week uh, where they actually are letting people uh, self-host Convex. So Convex is open source. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's essentially a managed uh, backend uh, or a backend, a managed backend as a service. You can think of it akin to like Firebase or Superbase and uh, it's open source, but they recently just announced, hey, we have this new way that you can do self-hosting. And so I wanted to get to take you guys through how to actually get this set up because I think this could be really, really useful for a lot of people who are building side projects and want to do some POC work or do some exploring and not have to worry about running up a bill on someone else's compute. You can just use your own compute. And then if you ever get to the point where you need to consider scale, you can just move your, uh, your data or your database into their cloud offering. So let's go ahead and scan through this blog post and uh, see what we need to do to get this set up. So it looks like they have three different options for you. They have uh, instructions to get you up and running on fly.io, which would be pretty cool, um, but I'm more interested in doing it locally. They also have some instructions for doing it with Docker Compose, and then they have some instructions for if you want to run it in Docker using that Docker Compose file, but you want to do it on a remote server, uh, which is what I've already set up. But I'm going to walk you through getting it set up locally on your machine, and then we can talk through uh, some of the, the details of what you need to do if you're doing this on a remote server and kind of the config changes I made to make that happen. So the first thing we need to do is we just need to clone this Docker Compose file that we have here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's make a new directory, CD, software projects. Let me disable my completion. Uh, so we'll make a new dir. We'll call it self-hosted convex and we'll just CD into that. And then we'll run the command they gave us, which is just going to basically go out to a repo. It's going to grab that Docker Compose file and it's going to copy that to our local machine here. And this is pretty much the most complicated part of the whole of the whole getting up and setting, uh, getting up and running part. After this, all we have to do is we just pull the image and then we Docker Compose up, and we're good to go. Uh, we do have to generate an admin key so we can actually log into the, the nice dashboard that Convex provides us to manage um, that backend, but it's all running locally. So let's go ahead and see if we cloned it. Looks like we did. As, as usual, MPX is not being the most speedy tool of choice. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and say Docker Compose Pull. So that's going to pull down whatever images are referenced by the Docker Compose file we just pulled down. We can see it's actually pulling down. It looks like two images. It looks like there's an image for their backend, and then there's an image for that dashboard. So the backend is actually where we're going to point our applications to uh, run our queries or run our mutations or to fetch data using HTTP actions. Um, but the dashboard is we're going to be able to all visualize all that. Looks like we're getting close to getting both these images pulled. Fantastic. So we've got that all pulled down. Now we should be able to do Docker Compose up. And looks like we're getting some containers created. We should be able to pull up Docker Desktop here in a moment and see our containers running. Let me go ahead and open Docker Desktop. Uh, there we go. We're getting some logs, so that's good. Uh, let me see if I can get Docker Desktop open. There we go. And now we can see we have a new stack in Docker Desktop. So we have a dashboard, we have a back end, and then we have some ports. So it, they tell us in this blog post uh, that we can go to localhost 6791, and that's where the dashboard is accessible at. So let's go ahead and hit that URL. 
Booyah. And so in order to log into this dashboard, we need an admin key. Now, the thing to note is that this admin key is like your password to this dashboard. So if you're getting this set up or when we talk about getting this set up on a remote server, you need to treat this admin key like you would any other secret because this will be the way that you access uh, the dashboard that's talking to that deployed uh, backend. It's also the way you're going to this admin key is also the way you're going to authenticate your application um, to have your front end talk to this back end. So let's go ahead and open up another tab here in my shell. And we'll just make it a little bigger so everyone can see. We'll disable the read line. We're going to CD into our self-hosted, which I guess isn't necessary, but just to keep us uh, organized. And so now we need to run that command to generate that key. So the way we do that is by actually running um, a command in the actual container. So you can see we're going to say docker compose exe, and then we're going to exe into the backend, and then we're going to run the shell script that's in that image. Um, and in that shell script, it does a bunch of fancy magic to generate us a key. So let's go ahead and run this command. And this is going to print a self-hosted key out here. And remember, again, this is going to treat this like a, a secret. I'm, I'm sharing it with you because as soon as I'm done making this video, I'm going to blow all these containers away and never use them again. But if you were actually doing this uh, for a server that you, or for something that you had deployed out to a remote server and that you were making publicly accessible uh, so that your front end could hit it, you would want to protect this just like you would any other secret. So let me go ahead and copy that. And now we can go to that dashboard and we should be able to see our dashboard now. Now, nothing's in our dashboard, right? This is just a plain instance of Convex stood up, uh, but now we have a local instance of Convex running. And so we could use this to do our own local development, right? So we could have a local instance that we use for our local deployments. Um, but we could also basically do all this on a remote server. And then all we'd have to do is make those containers ex, uh, exposed to the public through some port mappings, uh, setting up your web server configurations, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But let's actually see uh, an example of us actually using this local backend. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over to my shell here, and I'm going to navigate to uh, another directory called convex local deployments. This was something I was using earlier to explore local deployments. But now what we want to do is let's hook this up to that uh, local instance of um, that local instance of convex running on my computer. So let's go ahead and go to our env.local file. And so in here, we're going to set uh, two new important environment variables for the self hosted option. And then we're also going to set the standard v convex URL. So for the self hosted URL, that's going to be the URL in our Docker container that's mapped for the backend. And with our backend, you'll see we actually have two ports mapped here. Um, if I could show that to you, if Docker would cooperate with me. Um, how do I show all ports? There we go. So you can see we actually have two ports mapped. So one port, 3210, is the port that you want to talk to when you're doing WebSocket connections. And 3211 is the port you would talk to if you're doing HTTP actions, which again, this is all very convex specific language, but I'm hoping just kind of seeing that, hey, I can get convex up and running locally might inspire you all to kind of dig into convex a little bit more and actually explore some of their tutorials. But the port we want to use is 3210. That's what we want to use in our environment variables. So we'll come here and we'll say HTTPS localhost and we'll set that to 3210 and then we need our admin key which I copied earlier and I'm just pasting in here again this is a secret so you would want to share this with just anybody and then for our v URL that's going to be the same thing as our self-hosted URL localhost 3210 and then we can write and quit all this out and then we can run mpx convex dev and so that should move my functions that I have defined locally in this project. It should actually move them into that local deployment that I have running. So this is not running on HTTPS. This is running on HTTP, so I need to fix that. So let's go back to my localhost. And this is just going to be over HTTP, not HTTPS. Right, right, 
quit all. Okay, now we'll try MPX Convex Dev. So that should move all my functions that I've de defined locally up into that local instance, which they should be. So let's go look at the dashboard again. And you can see if I go to my functions, I have one that's for task get, but I don't have any tasks, right? I don't have any data. So I need to put some data in there. Let's do that too. So let's close that and we'll say MPX convex import and then I believe it's sample and then sample data oh, and then we need a table option to actually tell it uh, where to put it so let's go ahead and come back here and we'll write mpx convex import dash dash table we'll call it tasks we'll give it our sample data like this and so this should get our data imported looks like it created three tasks and a new table for us. So if we refresh, here we go. We've got our data now in our local instance. This is again running locally on our machine, but all the, the things we love about convex are happening. And then in our functions, we've got a task get. So let's come back to our shell here. Let's run mpx convex dev. And then let's run over here, open a new shell. We'll actually get our front end up and running. So let's go back into local deployment uh, convex local deployments let's run npm run dev and so now if i go to my app you can see it's kind of hard to see but these tasks right here are coming from that local instance of convex so let's go ahead and show you so you so you know i'm not a liar here so if we edit one of these over here so let's say let's go ahead and mark this one complete instead of false let's make it true and you can see it changed over here now we have buy groceries uh, they those are completed if I change the task description let's say integrate convex self-hosted you can see it update immediately. So we have all that convex functionality happening and it's all happening on a local instance. And all we had to do was basically run three commands and set two variables, right? So this is a great way you can use convex uh, self-hosted to do local deployment, local deployment and local development. But you could also follow the same approach and have something deployed out to a remote server, which is what I've done. And so I'm just gonna take you through that uh, very briefly because a lot of the configuration that you need to do aside outside of what I've already showed you just has to do with making sure that you can expose the instances of convicts that are running the dashboard and the back end that you can expose them to the public internet so you can actually reach them. So I'm going to go ahead and SSH into my server and we are going to navigate into self or convex here we go and we are going to take a look at the docker compose file and again this docker compose file is almost identical to what we already looked at um, i just had to make a couple of modifications so the two modifications i had to make to the docker compose file is you have to set this convex cloud origin um, to the actual origin urls for which the backend is going to get hit for WebSockets and for HTTP actions. And then you also have to set your next, next public deployment URL, which is going to be the URL of your backend that's publicly exposed that your dashboard is going to talk to, right? Um, and then once you have those set up and you have them properly configured in your uh, web server, then you should be able to reach them. And I'm not gonna dig into the web server configuration. I'm specifically using Nginx. If that's something you want me to walk through, I'm happy, I would be happy to do that. But once you have this all configured correctly, now you should have a publicly available instance of your application running, or of your Convex instance running. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. And I can show you that if we navigate to So if we navigate to not localhost, but if we navigate to HTTPS dashboard.convex.stephenfreeborn.com, which is the URL I've made to access the dashboard that's running on my remote server, I get that same UI to give an admin key, which I'm gonna do. 
let's go ahead and copy my password here. We'll populate it. We can log in. And you can see I have all that same data here because that I just had sample data. There was nothing else I could do to set this up. I was just using uh, one of their view tutorials to kind of experiment with this. Uh, but now I can theoretically have this actually be a back end to an application that I have deployed out into the public because my front end could reach it uh, via, via public uh, URLs. And I've got my functions to get tasks and it all works. So um, I think this is just really exciting. I think Convex is such a great tool. Um, I think it's I think it's better than better than the experiences I've had with Superbase, better than the experiences that I've had with Firebase, um, and I think there's just something magical about building with it. And I think that for a lot of people, sometimes it can be scary to sign yourself up to live in someone else's cloud to build on top of someone else's cloud. And now that Convex open open the door to this self-hosted option, you now have this ability to get up and running on your own compute, maybe your own server maybe start with a single instance of convex and then if you have something that actually takes off or something that is actually worthy of, of needing to scale you can then migrate into their cloud offering um, when you need to opt into that scalability uh, if you found this helpful if this uh, piqued your interest in convex let me know in the comments uh, if you see something that you did a little bit differently to get convex up and running for you on your self-hosted machine uh, or your private uh, server let me know whether it's remote or local uh, maybe there's something I could do better and I would also 100% point you to this blog post on Convex's stack uh, that kind of walks you through all the different options they have for getting self hosting set up with all the documentations and the commands I'll actually link this in my video's description I hope you found this helpful if you did leave a comment otherwise I'll see you in another live stream another video another short uh, until then, I hope you guys are having a good day, and I'll talk to you later.